The internet is full of bro science, fake knowledge, half information or propaganda. Your quest of reliable, authentic health information ends here. So subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon and you never have to go anywhere else ever again. Hello everyone, how are you today? I am Dr. Paramjeet and you're watching Dr. Education. Welcome back to my channel. As you know, we make videos about health and healthcare topics and today we are going to talk about bovine growth hormone injections. Jiha. Yes, those injections which are injected into cows and cattle in order to obtain more and more milk from them. And is it okay? Right? Is it safe? Right? The questions are, does it actually increase the risk of cancer in humans? Right? Does it, because people know that injections are given to cattle as well as antibiotics are needed. So why are the antibiotics given? Are there any risk for infections or development of uh, more resistant bacteria because of these antibiotics? And are there any risk of these to actually go into humans, right? And what is the risk of these growth hormones being active inside humans or not? So all many questions are there regarding this topic. And because this basic uh, injection is being used all over the world except for few countries, right? So what is the science? What is the basic behind this? And most important question because the reason why people actually ask other people to stop drinking milk, one of the reasons is this, that they think that it might cause cancer, right? Because initially before uh, old studies used to show this. So what is the basic, right? Let's talk about this, right? This is basically recombinant bovine growth hormone, recombinant bovine RBGH. These are the injections. See, what happens is, there is something called as somatotropin. Somatotropin is your human growth hormone, which is basically increasing the uh, cell uh, growth and cell replication inside few types of cells, right? And it basically does its work by increasing something called as insulin-like growth factor, IGF-1, ins IGF-1, right? That is what it increases. So what happens is, this somatotropin is basically secreted by our own pituitary gland in your brain and it increases the growth of many uh, organs, many like even including your muscles, including your breast tissues, other things, right? For females, mastitis, female, etc, etc, many things. So the idea is this recombinant bovine growth hormone when injected into cattle, it increases the IGF-1 levels increases their uh, cell uh, replication the growth of their uh, milk and therefore milk production increases right so that's why this is used in 1993 the food and drug association fda us fda approved the use of rbgh human growth uh, recombinant bovine growth hormone in cattle right they approved it after considering a lot of studies and there were a lot of studies done by not just FDA by eight other associations just like that and that's why it is still approved in the US and many countries all over the world including India right but a few countries like Canada and some European unions and other few countries they do not use it right now that's up to them by their own research or whatever the point is here that what does the research show number one question does it actually increase igf level igf1 levels and if it does uh, what is the effect does it actually cause cancers which was the likely uh, research in the initial phase so but later on the researchers proved it wrong right the point is if some people actually are drinking this milk which has been uh, taken out from the cattle or cows which are actually given those injections rbgh these people have been seen to have 10 percent higher insulin like growth factors in those cows i mean the cow's milk has 10 percent higher so these people people who actually drink them regularly have 10 percent more igf1 okay but the same level has been seen if the person is drinking not milk but soy milk. 
So it's very evident that it's not actually the cow's milk. It's actually the protein, the mineral, so some other component which is causing the higher IGF-1 levels, right? Obviously, milk, any kind of milk has growth, uh, has hormones, right? That's why it's important. But the quantity of these hormones, if we are given to uh, children, say infants, see, because FDA approved the use because of uh, actually considering the worst case scenario, right? Number one, the extent of the absorption of this IGF-1 hormone is not sure. That how much does it get absorbed? Even if it gets fully absorbed, even if it increases your growth hormones completely, considering that even if you take, if a, if a child or you uh, take 1.5 liters, right? First thing they actually considered it in a child. If in an in infant or child, they take 1.5 liters of this recombinant bovine growth hormone uh, associated milk from a cattle or cow even then there the increased amount of growth uh, IGF-1 in that infant will be less than 1% of what already already the infant is producing inside his body on front the body so your body itself produces a lot of insulin like growth hormone right irrespective of what you take that's why the FDA approved it and that's why it's still approved in the US, right? And that's why it's approved in India. So number one reason that does it cause uh, growth hormone increase, IGF-1? Yes, it does. But does it cause a problem? No, it doesn't. Does it cause cancer? Absolutely not. It has been proved many times that it is not associated it is not associated with increased risk of cancer, which was previously thought and because of which many people still don't take it, right? So it's not associated with cancer. That this is directly coming from the uh, American Associations of Cancer, Cancer Asso Asso Association Society. So you can go and check it on their website also. They also say that they don't think and they don't, uh, they agree that it does not cause any cancer. The Cancer Association says that, then it must be true. And Americans use it, then why don't Indians? <clears throat> then, second point is, does this recombinant bovine growth hormone is active in, 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 in humans or what? Whether this hormone will cause problem, then this, uh, the answer is very simple. Number one, it is not active in, in, in humans, right? Recombinant bovine growth hormone does not affect your, your receptors, your hormone receptors. Number two, it is destroyed in the uh, intestine itself. It does not even get absorbed. Solved. Third thing about antibiotics. See, what happens, there is a side effect in the cattle. If you give these injections repeatedly, the cattle, their growth increases, their actual growth rate of milk increases, so milking increases, so there is more chances of mastitis, inflammation, infection of the uh, milking area, that area. And that's why they require more antibiotics regularly, right? Whenever they have mastitis, they have more antibiotics. And that's why the bacteria which regularly infect cattle, they are, they will get a little more resistant to those antibiotics. These are the cattle antibiotics. But are these the same which are transmitted to human? No. How much of them are transmitted to human? No. Right now, that, that concern, that data is not present. More research is needed on that. But then, that is where uh, research is going on. Okay, so but till date there is no such issues, right? If there will be, FDA will think about it and do something about it, and US will do something about it. We are not supposed to do that right now, right? So that concern is obviously there, but research is going on. Then, <clears throat> so third uh, big issue is about uh, IGF-1. I have already told. Uh, then this thing, other uh, this, uh, so that's all about it, right? What you need to understand that okay, any milk which is uh, taken up from some cows or cattle which are given injections are not harmful for you, will not cause cancer, they will not cause any extraordinary symptoms or hormonal imbalances. They are quite safe, very safe. It only produces a little bit higher IGF-1 which are similar to what will happen if you eat a little bit of more soy or take a little bit of more proteins. So same as that, right? 
so it's good to go don't worry about it if you want i'll give a link of that research article and there are many such research articles below go and check yourself and if you trust me then you do trust me i'm dr paramjit you're watching doctor education if you want to talk to me you can download docwise application librate or practo these three are the link where you can talk to me online and the links are given below so stay connected and stay healthy